So let's get to the first things first, flight tickets. I was in constantly check with the various international destinations on various websites such as Skyscanner, Momendo and Kayak. I knew Air Asia offers some cheap tickets to Southeast Asian countries. In early February, I was trekking to Karnataka with no range and no connection with the world. But suddenly at one place, I got range and I received an email of Skyscanner indicating a price drop in Mumbai to Kuala Lumpur airfare. Without wasting any time, I booked two tickets to Kuala Lumpur on the go. It costed me just 11,500 per person to and fro. Yes, you got it right, 11,500 only. After coming back home, the first thing I did was looking out for the visa process, which was quite an easy job in the end. Go on the Malaysian visa website and just fill a form, pay some fees and within 24 hours you will get your visa. Visa costed me somewhere around $120. The link to the visa website is given in the description below. Bang to day 1, reaching and exploring Kuala Lumpur. So after reaching Kuala Lumpur International Airport, we took a bus to TBS, which is the bus terminal of Kuala Lumpur city. This costed us around 22 ringgits. After reaching TBS, the first thing we did was taking a late night bus ticket to go to Kola Perlis, which is the gateway for Lankawi. This costed us around 100 ringgits. Breakfast at TBS was roughly around 15 ringgits. Train tickets to and fro to Batu Caves costed us 19.6 ringgits. Whereas lunch and the cave sightseeing costed us around 21.5 ringgits. We then moved to see the Twin Towers. Going to Twin Tower by train to and fro costed us around 9.6 ringgits. Evening snacks and late night dinner costed us 15.9 ringgits. So the total expenses for the day was somewhere around 203 ringgits. Now let's go to day 2. We reached Kola Palace on time and boarded the first ferry of the day to Lankavi. The ferry charges for two were 36 ringgits. As soon as we reached Lankavi, we booked a prepaid taxi to Shenang Beach, which costed us around 30 ringgits. Hostel charges for two beds were 80 ringgits for two nights. I highly recommend Soluna Guest House, especially for the service and the ambience you get here. The next expense for the day was the costliest meal we had on the entire Malaysian trip. This tasty lunch at Mumbai Palace costed us around 52 ringgits. Evening shopping, snacks and dinner costed us around 65 ringgits. So the total expense for the day was 303 ringgits. Day 3 The main plan for the day 3 was to explore Lankawi. So the famous 3 island hopping tour of Lankawi costed us around 60 ringgits for 2. The ticket to Dan Muting Island is 12 ringgits. Lunch was again at Mumbai Palace which costed us around 41 ringgits. Some fruits and a mango juice in this humid conditions costed us around 13 ringgits. Souvenirs and evening Italian dinner costed us around 36 ringgits. So the total expense for the day was 172 ringgits. This day was the cheapest in our Malaysian trip. Yeah. 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 King not a seven. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so I can read day one. <laughs> On day 4, we decided to move to Penang. Early morning ferry to Penang from Lankavi costed us around 170 ringgits for 2. Breakfast at KFC costed 5.5 ringgits. After reaching Penang, we had an authentic South Indian lunch at Little India for 13 ringgits. Our stay was at Georgetown and the hotel charges were 50 ringgits per night. We took a rest for a while and then decided to explore Penang. Bus ticket from Georgetown to Penang Hill was just 4 ringgits. Entry fee to Penang Hill, which also included the train ticket, was around 60 ringgits for a couple. After visiting Penang Hill, we were tired and even the bus frequency was not that good. So we took a cab to Georgetown, which costed us around 20 ringgits. A heavy dinner at a South Indian restaurant costed us around 25.4 ringgits. So the total expense for the day was 348 ringgits. 
So on day 5, we took a pleasing 5 hour bus journey to Cameron Highlands from Penang. This journey costed us around 80 ringgits for 2. Lunch at Ipo costed us somewhere around 13 ringgits. Hotel stay in Brinchang was around 206 ringgits for 2 nights. This was our costliest accommodation in the whole trip. So in Cameron Highlands, if you have to book any kind of day tours or bus journeys, you have to go to Tanarata, which is around 5 kilometers away from Brinchang. So due to the lack of public transport in Cameron Highlands, we had to take a taxi. So the taxi fare to and fro to Tanarata costed us around 40 ringgits. Some fruits and a light dinner costed us around 20 ringgits. So the total expense for the day was around 379 ringgits. So the sixth day was all about the best day tour we had on this trip. This day tour costed us around 150 ringgits for two. Lunch costed us around 22 ringgits. Few chocolates, strawberries and other souvenirs for my friends and family costed us around 30 ringgits. A light dinner for the day costed us around 10 ringgits. So the total expense for the day was around 212 ringgits. So on the last day, we took a bus to Kuala Lumpur from Brinchang, which costed us around 70 ringgits. We took one more bus from TBS to Kuala Lumpur International Airport, which costed us around 22 ringgits. Lunch and few snacks before the flight costed us around 28 ringgits. And a meal on board costed us around 20 ringgits. So if you add all the daily expenses, the grand total will boil down to 1762 ringgits which is roughly around 28,896 rupees rounding off to 30,000 per couple which means 15,000 per person So to conclude, Malaysia is a pretty safe and tourist friendly country Nowhere in our entire trip at any point we felt unsafe or being cheated The most common language spoken in Malaysia is Malay but most of the people know English so communication is not a problem also, all the major cities are well connected via train, buses and ferries. So transportation is sorted. One can also find range of accommodation in all the major cities of Malaysia. The only problem is food, which to my perspective is not compatible for Indian travelers. You will get good Indian food, but you have to grind for it. But if you are a true traveler, these things may not concern to you. So to end this series, I will say take 10 days off from your hectic schedule and go visit Malaysia. Thanks for watching and keep traveling. Cheers.